Hey, Brand Builder, Rory Vaden here. Thank you so much for tuning in to listen to this interview. We are so excited to bring you this information and wanted to let you know that, hey, there's no sales pitch coming uh, from anything that we do. This is all our value add to you and the community. However, if you are somebody who is looking for specific strategies on how to build and monetize your personal brand, we would love to talk to you. And we offer a free call to uh, everyone that's interested in getting to know us and is willing to give us a chance to get to know them and share a little bit about what we do. So if you're interested in taking us up on a free strategy call, you can do that at brandbuildersgroup.com slash summit call. brandbuildersgroup.com slash summit call. Hope to talk to you soon. On with the show. So honored and excited to bring back to you two of uh, people that I would consider mentors and two friends, uh, two people that we have worked with. Um, Kevin Harrington, most of you probably know because we had him on when we originally did our Influential Personal Brand Summit. He was uh, the original shark on the show Shark Tank. He is a co-founding board member of EL Entrepreneurs Organization and really the inventor of the infomercial, which uh, has led to him selling over $5 billion in global sales. Um, you know, these are products like Billy Mays and Jack LaLanne and Kim Kardashian and 50 Cent and George Foreman. Um, and he's just amazing. And then um, my other friend, Mark Tim, who you'll you'll hear his story right now. We've Mark is someone that we met through the Ziegler family. And I know that's how him and Kevin met. And he is a serial entrepreneur himself. Um, he has started more than a dozen companies. Several of them have grown and been sold. He has spoken professionally for more than 25 years. Um, and I consider Mark a personal mentor because of the way that he runs his family life and uh, the way that him and his wife, Anne, just you know, uh, treat their family like a business. And that's probably the biggest thing that I have taken from uh, Mark over the years. So the two of them have teamed up to write a book here that is called Mentor to Millions, which has uh, we already know has pre-sold thousands and thousands of copies. It's a, a fantastic book from two amazing people. So guys, welcome to the show. Hey, Rory. Thanks for having us. It's great to be here. Thanks, buddy. So um, let's talk about how y'all met because uh, obviously, you know, this book is really interesting. You write it from, uh, you know, about the power of having a mentor and I think in this relationship, Mark plays like the mentee, Kevin plays the mentor. Um, but how did you guys meet? Because the three of us all share sort of a, a, an unusual and unique bond. Yeah, so I, I'll jump in and uh, yeah. share that because we actually met through our mutual mentor. So I had Zig Ziglar as a mentor when I was a young man, and Kevin had Zig Ziglar as a mentor as a young man, and guess who else had Zig Ziglar as a mentor? <laughs> None other than you, Roy. So, uh, so this is the the book wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for Zig's mentorship. So we 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 owe a lot to him, and Tom Ziglar wrote the foreword, but that's the why we had to write this book. Because the, the, the book's title is Mentor to Millions. That's not millions of dollars. That's millions of people impacted. So mm. I, didn't know, I didn't know Kevin, okay? I didn't know you. But because of our mentorship of Zig Ziglar, even after his passing from the earth, we all knew the children of Zig Ziglar. And it was the children of Zig Ziglar that introduced me to Kevin, that introduced me to you, that introduced Kevin to you. And so you yep. see the impact of Zig's legacy is now rippling on you know, way past his passing on the earth. So that is how impact, that's the kind of impact that we're talking about, the exponential impact of mentorship. And that's why we had to write this book because that's the secret that crazy, awesome, successful people have is they had mentors in their lives. And would you say that, so, so Kevin, for you, who were some of your other mentors? So like I know Zig, you talk about because secrets of closing the sale and, and you, you know, you guys have done a lot with that. Yeah. Who are some of your other mentors in addition to Zig? And, and, and did you have a lot of mentors growing up? I know you've yeah. been a mentor to so many. Yeah, um, good, good question. And I think I go all the way back. I, 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 I kind of joke a little bit, but it's, it's for real that I had my first mentor when I was 11 years old happened to be my father, Charlie, because my, my father 
was was a bartender. I'm one of six kids, and there wasn't a lot of money and and great uh, surplus <laughs> as I was growing up. And but my dad said, "Hey, I've saved up enough money. I'm opening up my own restaurant, Harrington's Irish Pub." So I was in there at 11 years old, not just washing dishes and and serving uh, uh, trays of food. I was in the back with him, counting the money at the end of the day and looking at the suppliers. And it was pretty amazing how he brought me shoulder to shoulder with him. We'd go out and pick up supplies. And and, and of course, I was going to school also, but uh, grade school at the time. But make a long story short, my dad was was he mentored me to start my own businesses when I was young. So I, I started a business when I was in high school and then another one in college and, and et cetera. But uh, so as I got out of, out of uh, getting into the, the SC and TV business and sold some of the businesses I started during high school, one of the first big mentors for me was, was, was somebody that I needed desperately because I built a business in this as seen in TV space, I had a lot of orders that were sitting, but I couldn't fulfill them because I didn't have the inventory. So I needed capital to, to have inventories. And I went to bank after bank. People would say, oh, go to the bank and get lines of credit, get, get sure. some financing, right? Well, the, 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 there was no assets for them to lend against. I was a young entrepreneur. This is 35 years ago, but I got a, a former bank president who was retired that came in and said, let me tell you the deal I'm going to do. You've got five banks that turned you down. I'll get you financing. Probably from one of those banks that turned you down, I'm going to get you a $3 million line of credit, which is what you need. And then after that's all done, there's no cost. That's straight mentoring me, helping you because you deserve it. You need it. I want to help you. And then at that point, if you want to do some business with me, we can sit down and talk about it. But I'm going to have brought you an amazing gift in the process. 90 days later, $3 million bucks in my account. We took that and grew the business I mean, we went tenfold from there and it was just unbelievable because uh-huh. I was a great marketing guy, but I needed cash. I needed capital and inventory. So um, this this was an amazing step for me. And of course, beyond that, people don't know that before Russell Brunson ever started ClickFunnels, I was in this As Seen at TV business and I said, I'm losing all my viewers. TV viewership is dropping. So I reached out to Russell and Russell gave me some great tips on digital marketing. And I, I actually came out of that meeting with Russell and sold a bunch of my as seen and TV assets because I realized the handwriting is on the wall. This is a business. I'm on TV today, but now, to, and I say today, that was 10 years ago. Today, it's digital. It's Facebook. It's Instagram. Right. It's LinkedIn. It's, you know, so um, I've had some great transitions um, from Russell Brunson to Zig Ziglar to my father to the banker that was retired to even getting a, a couple of days with Richard Branson uh, down at the famous Necker Island. Um, he gave me some really powerful advice. So mentors have been near and dear to me. And to this day, I still have quite a few in my life. Um, So let me ask you about this, Kevin, because this is interesting. You mentioned Russell Brunson, um, you know, and he's younger than you. Oh, yeah. And Absolutely. he's much younger than you. And you also came to About 30 Vaden. years, I think, by the That's way. That's <laughs> right. Well, you and your son and your team and Mark came to Vaden Villa for a day of strategy stuff with us. Yes. And that, you know, amazed me, which, which is, and it amazes me to hear you say it now that you've not been afraid to have mentors younger than you. So, it, you know, how do you pick a good mentor? Because I know this is part of the book, uh, the book, again, Mentor to Millions. What are some of the things that you guys use to, to pick mentors? Because age obviously is not necessarily the, the key criteria. And I, I'd love to hear from both of you yeah. uh, on that. Mark, go ahead and, I, and I'll give you my thoughts. After. So from, from my perspective, you know, when, when I looked at uh, Kevin, uh, it doesn't matter the age. It matters. Do they have wisdom and experience in an area that you need? And, and more than anything, Kevin can speak a lot on the mentor side. I can speak a lot on the mentee side as well, because, you know, Kevin is my mentor and that's the journey we take in the book. But one of the things that you should be looking for in a mentor is number one, have they failed? You know, because it's hard to learn from somebody that hasn't had some failure in their life. Wow. 
And it's big. We, we talk a lot in the book about failure and how you respond to failure. And you need mentors that know and have failed because you're going to fail. But you need to know you can lean on them and they'll pick you up and they'll help you learn from that process. It's not about failure. It's about how you respond to that failure. You know, our mutual mentor, Zig, said nobody drowns from falling in water. They only drown if they stay in the water. You know, he knew you're going to fall down. You can't <laughs> stay there. And so you need mentors to pull you up. So you're looking for someone that isn't a one hit wonder, that doesn't just have one way. And the other thing you look for in a mentor is do they listen? Because you need them to hear you out. What are you trying to accomplish in this world? What, what's your unique gift to the world? And let them listen long enough to then know how to really pour into you. And so when that happens, again, it doesn't matter if they're younger than you or older than you. I have to tell you right now, I've got younger mentors that are mentoring me in technology. I mean, I, you know, I just, I can out myself right now and say, I didn't have a cell phone at 25 years old. I was in my late twenties right. before I got a cell phone. So the things that are happening in technology are just intuitive, automatronic for these young people. And so I have young people that are mentoring me to be able to use technology in a much more robust way to get the message out there. So it's really, about, do they know something? And Roy, one of the other things that, that people look for in mentors and getting a lot of phone calls right now from folks that are building up a little business, they're getting some sales on Amazon and some places, and now they're like, oh, okay, we need capital or maybe we should exit. So look, finding a mentor that's been through a few exits uh, because – too many people would come on Shark Tank and they just want a lot of money for this teeny little percentage of their company. Right. And now I own equity and a private company may never be able to get my money back. Right. So uh, finding an exit or a way to, you know, to monetize your investment is an important thing in today's world. So uh, and there's a lot of roll up companies that are buying up the Amazon type entities and things like this. So there's a lot of good folks out there. That I mean, I I, I know a, a, a neighbor bought a house and came in and found out. Oh, he's a lawyer and he's 35 years old and he and he used to work for Major League Baseball. But he's selling. He's starting Amazon businesses, buying Amazon businesses and crushing it. So he's in his fifth or sixth acquisition right now. So there's a, a very smart young mentor that could help a lot of companies that are out there in the marketplace of of monetizing an exit strategy. Yeah. Well, and so most of the people listening here are, I mean, are entrepreneurs in some sense, right? It might be their side hustle or something, but um, do you think mentorship applies directly to like personal brands and people specifically that are like in this space? Cause a lot of, I think a lot of personal brands are like both of you in that they achieved something and now they're kind of moving into more of like a, a teaching role. So do you do you think that this, you know, message still applies directly to them or, or how or is it is it different from how you would mentor someone in a corporate environment or just in a classic kind of entrepreneur, entrepreneurial setting at all? Well, you know, I think certainly personal brands, it, it, a personal brand is still it's, it's a business. It, it has it needs customer acquisition. Um, uh, you know, metrics. So you're building funnels, you're acquiring followers, customers. Yes. So, um, and, and again, you, you mentioned my age. So, you know, it, it Russell Brunson's way younger than me, but here, the, a lot of the, the younger uh, uh, generation has tuned into the world of digital in much more powerful way. So, so yeah, I do believe that um, even on the branding, I mean, there, there are, what are the outlets that personal brands should go after? I mean, now there's something new with LinkedIn, LinkedIn Live, and there's obviously Facebook Live came and was very powerful for, for, for quite a bit and still is. So, um, you know, so the, one of the questions for personal brands is where is the best place to spend your time, focus your energies, and if you do have some dollars to invest, to invest. So, um, you know, it. I, I try to keep myself on the cutting edge of, of what's happening out there in the world. And, um, I, you know, from artificial intelligence to virtual reality type things, I'm already starting to explore ventures like this that 
will 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 you know maybe be a little bit uh, uh, pioneering where you get your legs uh, blood running down your ankles kind of thing from from being too early in the market. But I, I I like experimenting with things like this, and I think sometimes mentors can help steer you in certain directions. Yeah, yeah, and so Mark, for you specifically, you know, in terms of mentoring personal brands, like. Um, it's interesting because being a personal brand, it often happens like in the cracks of time in your day, like in between meetings, you're checking social media or you're like, you, you know, you don't often have like blocks of just days at a time unless you're writing a book. But outside of that, um, I find that there's this real uh, temptation to have it creep into taking over your whole personal life. Um and one of the things that both of you have done is not just scaled businesses, but, uh, you know, like, and I, I know Mark specifically for you, you study this a lot about scaling your, your, your life and, and running your household like a business. Can you just share with us, that's been a one way I think that you've mentored me directly. Can you share a few thoughts on that? And, you know, if it's specific to personal brands or not, but just that we have this temptation to always be like, on social media, doing DMs, doing comments, doing posts during dinner, you know, and after hours and in bed. And like, how, how do you, how do you deal with some of that stuff? Yeah, it's a challenge. And so, and, and I got to tell you, just to be candid with everybody listening, I got it wrong longer than I got it right. I can only mm. share what it feels like to get it right because I know what it feels like to get it wrong. And I was there building the brand of, of company, a personal brand, 24-7, always on. My family saw me. And you know what they did? They resented what I did. The book starts out with me at the end of my driveway having one of the most pivotal moments of my life, a driveway moment where I realized I had everything upside down, that I was giving my family my last and my least instead of my first and my best. And I didn't know what to do about it. I just knew it was wrong. And I was always searching like all these entrepreneurs and brands for this perfect work-life balance. And then I figured out it's a myth. There's no such thing as work-life balance. You're never in complete balance of work and life, but you can integrate. And that's what we talk about in the book. What if your family becomes your most valuable business? What if the business you're going home to is the most valuable business you'll ever own, ever operate, ever even be a part of? What if the most valuable brand is your family? Okay, mm. then versus the one you're going to. And by the way, I took it to the next level. That day in that driveway, I came home, I incorporated my family. I actually created a brand out of my family. We have a logo, we have a mission statement, we had shareholder meetings on Sunday nights. And what I did was I started taking everything I knew to do in business and started applying it at home. So if you've got a great personal brand, create a family brand. One of the coolest things we ever did was do a family logo cost us $99 on 99 designs. And we had 185 designers submit designs for our little family logo. It was epic. And we were sending surveys out to aunts and uncles and cousins and friends, and they were voting on it. And the family was so proud when it was done. And we had this common ground. And so the bottom line is if you're building a family brand and it's all consuming, integrate your family, involve them in that family brand, involve them in your personal brand, tell them what they're do what you're doing, integrate what's happening, let them be a part of it, be transparent with it, and they'll not resent it. They'll want to dive in and help you do it. And that's a huge difference. And that's where we want to be as moms and dads, husbands, fathers, wives, we want our family to embrace us as a business and brand, not resent it. Well, I love that. And I mean, being that the book is about being a mentor, you're actually mentoring your family first, like by the, by the, by the work of doing that. Here's a real, this is funny. So a few nights ago, AJ and I are putting Jasper down for bed. You know, Jasper is now, um, so Jasper is three, like three and a half. Um, he, he was baby last, you know, basically last yeah. time when you guys got to meet him. Um, and he said, uh, you know, basically he was like, what are we doing tomorrow is tomorrow family day. And we said, no, tomorrow is work day. And he said, oh, okay. I go to work. Um, and AJ said, do you think you want to work with us in the business one day, Jasper? And he says, yeah, but I'm going to need a cell phone for that. Uh, <laughs> so he's negotiating his package uh, already, uh, which I love. Um, 
Kevin, last last little question just for you. Um, what are some things that you, you, you know, advice that you would give to personal brands? I mean, you've been on TV, you, you like you've played this, you know, such a big role in the world. Yeah. Are there any last kind of parting thoughts that you'd have for anyone that kind of aspires to have the kind of worldwide impact and reach that you've been able to have? Yeah. So, I mean, get, this pandemic has, has shown a lot of interesting developments. And what happened in, at the very beginning, I started getting a lot of phone calls. People mm-hmm. wanting to collaborate and and because time's a challenge, you hunker down, but reach out, talk to your mentors, talk to folks. And I, I believe that collaboration is, is good, venturing together, doing things together. So I've been we've been doing Mark and I outside of the book. We, we've been doing a lot of things together, but um, also with other organizations with Roland Frazier at War Room with Joe Polish at Genius Network, and Mike Calhoun at Board of Advisors, you know, these collaborative efforts and even um, writing books. I mean, Zig Ziglar created amazing content, you know, uh, 30 some books in dozens of languages. Uh, I, I collaborated with the family to relaunch some of those books in in partnership. So, uh, so uh, in, in fact, I think you're probably familiar with, with this one, Rory, but this was a book that was re-released, Secrets of yeah. Closing the Sale, with Kevin Harrington. So, and and by the way, Zig has 4.7 or 4.9 million followers on Facebook. So, uh, you know, when you collaborate, you tie in to the network of the followers of the collaborator mm-hmm. that you're collaborating with. So it's, I, I just, I believe in, in creating lots of content putting it out there, joining groups, LinkedIn groups, uh, writing books, writing lead magnets, and and just continuing to push and build uh, the brand. But this is a great opportunity to be able to reach and collaborate into some really powerful networks of uh, of followers with other folks. I love it. Uh, Mentor to Millions is the name of the book. Where do you guys want people to go? I, you have some amazing bonuses and stuff that you're doing. Yeah, we have a lot of amazing bonuses and, and stuff that they can do as well. But the biggest thing we wanted to share, if they go to KevinMentor.com, Kevin and I want everybody to develop the habit of mentorship. So we're giving away 30 days of mentorship. And that's above and beyond the other bonuses. This is something Kevin and I came up with and said, mm. after 30 days of seeing what it's like to have mentorship, and some of that will be live, Lori. And so, you know, so we're 30 different areas of mentorship in their life. We know after those 30 days, they're going to want to raise their hand and say, I need a mentor in my life always. And so KevinMentor.com, go there. That's where your mentorship journey can get started. Well, I love it. Collaboration, mentorship. Uh, I'll never forget Kevin one time told me that the uh, secret to negotiating is to make sure it's a win for everybody. That's how you know it's going to be a healthy partnership. And um, we appreciate you guys so much. We'll put links to all that. The book is Mentor to Millions. Y'all go get it. Uh, Let us know on social what you thought about these guys. Guys, we wish you the best. Thanks, Rory. Always a pleasure. Tell AJ I said hello. Take care.